Hey ladies, it's Dr. Hudgens. I have read your teaching plans um, today and have provided feedback to you. The majority of your feedback is going to be on your worksheet. If you submitted um, additional materials like PowerPoints or handouts, you're going to have a few comments on those, but not a lot. Um, open those files just to see if there's anything, but most of your comments are going to be on your primary worksheet. I have thoroughly enjoyed reading um, your teaching plans. You guys were, were highly successful with this assignment. And this this is not an easy thing to do. Um, if at any point while you were doing this you were thinking, boy, is this tedious, um, or thinking, hmm, what was I thinking when I thought it, I wanted to be a nurse educator? It can't possibly be this hard. The reality is, it is. If you're doing it well, you're being intentional and thoughtfully planning out your student activities, your teaching sessions, all the strategies you're going to use, and you're being at the top of your profession, this is tough stuff. So if it felt tedious, it felt time consuming, welcome to education. I promise you, the more you do this, the better you'll be at it. You'll have less need for such a structured outline. You'll begin to um, remember all the things you need on your checklist of items to bring to class. Um, you'll need less of an outline. You'll become an expert in your own teaching content and you won't need as many details. You'll create your own cachet of um, pictures and articles and things that you use all the time. So this will not feel as arduous. But it is tough stuff, and it's tough if you're doing it well. So if this was something that really you poured into and you really, really thought about, um, it was very evident from the, the work products that you all submitted. Thoroughly pleased. Um, as a mental health nurse, I have to tell you that this is one of the challenging assignments to grade because I get queasy when we talk about medical things. Um, so bless Melanie and Laura and Melissa's hearts. Um, I got a mental health concept, communication, and then um, I think it was Melissa that did the um, oral medi or medication administration. One of them had a picture of a needle in it, which still made me a little queasy. Um, so many fascinating topics. For a mental health nurse, I know more about the PEDS unit or the OR world or wound care, all things I never, ever, ever wanted to know. I now know because I read your PowerPoints and read your outlines. Um, a little lightheaded a few times, had to take a break, and um, my husband always thinks it's entertaining when I'm grading these because I take a lot of breaks in between grading each one of them, um, and I, you know, jokingly say, you know, I need to, you know, not feel so lightheaded while I finish their grading. Um, I'm such a mental health nurse. Um, so great details, and if, if your detail were was um, significant enough that it made me a little queasy, well, you know, that's, that's the price I, I pay for um, being an educator. Um, appreciate your efforts. It truly, truly was so well done. Um, okay, so let's talk about just in general. Um, if you got feedback that you really need to trim this down, drill down to key concepts, it's because you tackled an elephant instead of a trunk. Um, you really do need to start thinking about how you're going to get 15 minutes of content out of this assignment. We're going to talk more about that next week in your feedback. I just want you to start thinking critically. Um, or practicing it. If you think what you have is going to be 15 minutes, run through it a few times. See how it feels. You're, you're going to need to make some adjustments. I expect that there's going to be some adjustments, specifically in your content. Um, I don't expect to see that you're going to use a different teaching strategy or a different modality um, or that your assessment's going to change, but your content's going to get pared down. Everything else should be pretty much the same. Um, Lots of you struggled with what to do with students with disabilities. I'm going to send you a hyperlink to a source um, from the American, I think it's American Psychology Association. They do a really nice job of breaking down these are the kinds of disabilities, these are the kinds of accommodations we should be using. Um, they give some really great details. So I'm going to send that to you as a reference. The other thing that I thought was interesting is many of you used YouTube videos in your PowerPoints. Um, I'm a big believer that if you can make it shiny and pretty, the students like it better. I'm going to send you another hyperlink. It's a um, YouTube video for, for how to make your um, hyperlinks to the YouTube videos a picture. So let's say that your hyperlink took you to um, respiratory uh, sounds. You could do a picture of a lung and hyperlink that picture of a lung to, when you click on it, the hyperlink to that video is embedded in the picture and it takes you to the YouTube site. It's just prettier and it's a neat 
um, tool to have in your toolbox if you want to wow people. Um, sometimes I do that in my overhead pre presentations and I forget to make notes to myself in my lecture notes and I forget that a picture is a hyperlink and then I have to go all the way back and go, oh, I forgot something. Um, so if you do use this um, strategy, make sure you make yourself some notes. I'm not always as, um, as good about that as I'd like to be. So Please touch base if you have questions or concerns, especially as we move forward into the week that you'll um, be developing a presentation on this material. We want it to be as um, tight as it can be so that that assignment is just the focus on you being fabulous in your teaching setting with your students. That's it. I don't want you to have to do any more heavy lifting on your content. I want you to be ready to go. Okay, next week. Um, your practicum logs are or number two is due. Make sure that you have read feedback from log number one, applied it to log number two, and then make sure that your time log, whenever you put time into your um, time log, that those days and hours are what's represented in log number two. If you happen to have an extra day that you're going to use for log three, don't put it in the time log because when I go in, I read your time logs and I make a list of your hours and then I open your practicum logs and if they don't jive, I think, um, you're making a mistake or I'll ask questions. So make it as clean as you can from one log to the next so that they align um, and that there's clarity. Your paper is teaching with technologies and folks this is literally just looking at three technologies, figuring out how you would use them, understanding what your learning curve may be and how you'll get up to speed in its use and the practical application. How would you use this technology? Two of them have to come from the very lengthy list that was provided, and one of them can be yours. Maybe you're already doing something in your hospital setting or in your um, academic setting that you just love and it's not on the list. Please um, use that as your third option. I'm going to encourage you to use something you've not used before. If you pick things that you're already using, yes, you will make this assignment easier, but you will not be growing as an individual edu educator. And that's my goal for you. I'm not going to know either way. So this is an integrity thing. Um, my encouragement is to use this as an opportunity to grow. As I develop the list, every probably every semester, um, spring um, summer and fall, I go in and I add to the list because some of um, the students have had some great suggestions. And then there have been times that I've had to take things off because they're just, they're a train wreck tool and I wouldn't use them in practice and don't want, um, I don't want to pass on bad tools. Um, so this is a living document. So if you have something new and shiny that you want to use, put it in your paper um, and it may be something that I'll add to my list. I'm always looking for um, fun ways to do things. Our um, administrative staff, um, Lisa Altizer, you may get email from her. She just sent out an air table. It's a tool that breaks things up into grids. So it's sort of like Excel, but it's so much prettier. Um, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to use it, but I am dying to use it. Um, maybe I'll put it on my list for the technology class and you guys can play with it. It's just a neat way to organize material and I can see students using it as a really good tool to organize material. Um, for um, topics. So always be looking to grow folks and use the technology paper as an opportunity to grow. Um, okay, I think I've said oh and um about 20 times. You can tell I'm getting tired. <sighs> It's time to walk the puppies, um, so I'm going to let you go. If you have questions or concerns, know that I'm here. Holler at me, and I will get back to you as quick as possible. Remember that Ask the Link um, professor is there for you for general who, what, where, when, how questions, personal things sent to my email box, and I will get back with you. Know that I'm thinking about you, and I'm praying for you. Um, I, I'm a, a Lutheran, um, so this is our week, our first week of Advent, not, not every faith does the Advent thing. We do. Um, so our dinner table has got the Advent wreath and it's just lovely. And to me, this is such a special time of year. And that first week of Advent of really thinking about um, the, the hope in God's promise of his son. I, I hope that you were spending this week feeling, having some time to really reflect on this first week of, of the official Christmas season and, and really be anchored by the fact that, that God keeps his promises and that he is consistently faithful and truthful and that you find comfort in that um, in those words. Know that I'm praying for you, thinking about you, and I'm here for you. Holler at me if you have questions. Otherwise, I will look forward to seeing your work next week. Y'all take care.